Mel never makes it back to the property. There was legal action taken against him for illegal construction. Power lines, septic tanks, paved roads. Of course, he didn't build these. The government had occupied the property for two years. Still, Mel lost everything. And a day or two after calling into Art's show, his bank account was emptied. Now, to be fair, plenty of people are calling in saying that this is all a hoax, but Art Bell is the master. Hoax or not, it's a great story, so he lets Mel continue. But Art does say that a TV crew was in the area looking for the hole. They didn't find it, but they did find evidence of a lot of military activity. And the no-fly zone has been mysteriously expanded to cover the area. In fact, TerraServer, which was a mapping site before Google Earth, showed that the whole area was blacked out. And this was confirmed. Skeptical callers said that Mel could have found the blacked out part of the map and pretended his property was there. The problem with that is, TerraServer launched six months after Mel made the first phone call. He couldn't have known. Soon we learned that a Native American tribe had contacted Mel and asked him if he wanted to come to Nevada and help them research. Research what? Another bottomless hole. They took you to it. They took me there. I was, I was not, I did not go all the way up to the hole, but there was conversations between uh, uh, the Native Americans and the Basque and the blah, 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 and they basically uh, uh, agreed that, you know, everything was as it should be, that I wasn't, you know, from CNN or the FBI or CIA or right, whatever. Right, right. Uh, and so I went there and uh, uh, I got to see the hole. Now, all right. What's there? The second hole wasn't located on the Indian Reservation where they lived. It was actually on public land that was used by Basques. The Basques are an ethnic group that comes from a small region between France and Spain. The Basques settled a couple of areas in the United States, including Nevada, in the mid-1800s. And they were using this land to herd sheep. They told Mel that the hole was there for as long as their people were, so at least 200 years. And they consider the hole and the land around it sacred. This hole was just over nine feet wide, just like Mel's. But where Mel's hole had a stone retaining wall of a few feet, the second hole had a metal collar and metal lining down as far as the eye can see. And this hole was warm to the touch. You could feel heat all around it. And the metal wouldn't make any sound or vibrate at all. Mel accidentally dropped a tool on the metal collar and the impact was completely silent. So Mel and the Basque begin their experiments. The first test was they lowered a bucket of ice down into the hole about a thousand feet and they kept some ice at the surface as a control. When the surface ice was melted, they brought the bucket back up. That ice didn't melt at all. And even stranger, the ice was no longer cold to the touch and it wasn't wet. The ice felt like large pieces of salt. So they tried to melt the ice over an open flame. It didn't melt, did it? Nope, it caught fire. Uh. Not only that, it continued to burn for months. So they continued sending different amounts of ice down the hole. About two thirds of the time it melted normally, but one third of the time it was transformed. Now at this point, one of the braver Basque volunteered to go down the hole himself. What? Is he nuts? Yeah, everyone agrees that that's not a good idea. So they decided to send down a sheep. A sheep? Ooh, what happened to the sheep? Oh no! I just felt I was in a, the, the presence of something extraordinary, something beyond extraordinary, something like in that category of having a religious thing. There, This was just such a stunning thing to witness. The sheep did not want to go in the hole. The closer it got, the more it tried to kick its way out of its crate. They lowered the crate down the hole to 1,000 feet. At that point, it stopped moving, and they felt a humming sensation. They left the sheep down there for 30 minutes and then brought it back up. There was no movement. The crate was unchanged and the sheep looked fine, but it was dead. The Basque, being shepherds, knew how to butcher a sheep, so they brought it to a table for a quick autopsy. Oh, for crying out loud, what are they doing? The first thing that they noticed is that the sheep looked like it was cooked from the inside. And taking up almost the entire cavity of the sheep's body was what Mel described as a giant tumor. Ugh. Then the tumor starts moving. What in the is going on with the it's Dory. Oh! Yeah, I'm sorry, this is intense. Then, they cut the tumor open. No! 
Inside the tumor is what Mel describes as a fetal seal. Wait, wait, wait. Did you just say a fetal seal? Yeah, like a baby seal. It was attached to the tumor by an umbilical cord. But this seal-like creature had the eyes of a human. They watched the creature for a while as it crawled to the end of the table. And Mel felt like it wanted to get back to the hole. So he picked it up and set it near the edge. Of course, the creature was slimy. And Mel said that the fluid had the smell of ozone. So the men studied the creature, and it seemed to study the men for about two hours. Then the seal creature gave them a final look and jumped in the hole. Now, before Mel went to Nevada, he was diagnosed with advanced esophageal cancer. He had only six months to live. But after this experience, Mel was cancer-free. He thinks he was cured by the magic seal. Yep. Mel felt like he had a transcendent experience. He was completely changed after this. And just then... The radio show runs out of time. No! Across from me over here is the actual roadway into Mel's Hole. Don't go up that road. Up there a ways is a fence. But uh, you get across that fence, you're in a deep bunch of trouble. It might be that you simply disappear, period. A few months later, Mel returned to coast to coast. Something crazy happened with that bucket of ice. Remember one of the Basque took the burning ice to his cabin to keep warm? He had it in a stove. It burned for months, and it was pulling all the moisture out of the air. The air in the cabin was always dry. The owner's skin was always dry. He was constantly thirsty. When boiling water, the steam would be pulled into the stove. One day, the stove crashed through the floor and into the ground under the cabin. But it was still warm, so he patched up the floor and used the hole for warmth. A couple of weeks later, he's returning home and his entire cabin has collapsed and turned to dust. He moves in with his brother for a while. A month later, he comes back to the cabin and sees that the stove is now five feet underground. And the hole made by the stove was perfectly smooth. It was making a new baby bottomless hole. It was. And they couldn't get the stove back up. It took a giant crane to finally get the stove out of the hole. And at this point... The Basque said they were sometimes visited by the entity that they discovered in the hole. The magic seal? Yes, the magic seal. They felt it was a benevolent presence and considered the whole experience to be very spiritual. There are now brightly colored birds circling the hole. Birds that seem to be immune to bullets. That's how they respond to a spiritual experience. Shoot the birds? I guess. <laughs> Freaking Basque. The Basque even believed the magic seal is communicating with them over the radio using a system of beeps and clicks as language which they can understand. The creature warns the Basque that the ice is dangerous and can't fall into the wrong hands and would lead to the destruction of the planet. Art asks if there's a recording of this language. There is. The Basque recorded everything. For the next hour, a few more theories are considered and Art finally gets Mel to agree to come back on the show. But this time, he would bring the recording, photos, video, and everything he can get his hands on. Mel agrees to go back to Nevada and gather all the evidence. He hangs up, and the show ends. Mel is never heard from again. He doesn't respond to Art's calls, and eventually the line is disconnected. So after five years, the story of Mel's hole finally comes to an end. But it left so many questions. There are a lot of Art Bell highlights, and Mel's hole is right near the top. So how much of the story can we confirm? First, the location of the hole. Terra Server did black out that part of Washington, but on Google Earth, it showed back up. But if the military really had taken over the property, they would have covered up the hole. People have been searching for it for years. And of the many locations I found, there was one that was really compelling. This is the Google map. Someone actually went to the location to see what was there. These are the pictures. During one of his phone calls, Mel said there were two old buildings on the property, and one of them eventually collapsed under snow. This fits the description pretty well. And also on the property is this. Yep, a hole about nine feet wide with a stone retaining wall, exactly how Mel described. Now this caused quite a stir online, but the hole turned out to be an old well and definitely had a bottom. If you search the internet, you'll find a lot of people claiming they found Mel's hole. They haven't. It's never been found. At least, not yet. As for Mel, he's a complicated character. 
There's no record of Amel 